Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Tar N, Land of Legends. More specifically, to this small northeastern island known as the Brushed Continent, on which is located a sprawling, dense forest known as the Jungle of Growths. It's deep within this forest we find a small group of dwarves. Dwarves who hail from a small civilization known as the Cave of Lashing. These dwarves call themselves Ustostak, the Angry Tree, and they seek to construct a fortress here on this small island to gain a foothold for their civilization. A fortress named Ustosfathor, the Angry Forest, and whose symbol is a maple tree. The maple tree is screaming. A symbol that perfectly illustrates the agony that the great green expanses must go through on a daily basis. You know, to be perfectly frank, these dwarves don't really know what the forests go through, and they don't care either, of course. They're dwarves. But one of our main reasons for coming to this island out here in the middle of nowhere is to start some trade relations with the nearby elves. Elves that are stuck on this island and who I believe have a fairly strong civilization and who also, as far as I know, have had no contact with any other civilizations. And so I imagine if we could do some trading with these elves and get some of their powerful creatures and send them back to the homeland, then it can only be a benefit to us dwarves. And by pretending to care about the forests, then, well, it's only going to help us out that much more, isn't it? But that also brings one of the biggest challenges of this fortress. We're going to have to not cut down any trees, which I imagine is going to be a little bit difficult. Also, a second challenge is I think we're going to build this fortress on the surface. And also, I'd like to have it kind of coexist with the trees. Originally, I wanted to build a fortress up in the trees, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. We'll have a stab at it, but we'll play it by ear. And, you know, I should also mention that the pressure really is on here for the cave of lashing our civilization. We have not embarked on any new fortress ventures since King Trap, a jungle bound fortress with an enormous trap. Our hopes really were riding with those dwarves, but the fortress inevitably fell. Many years ago, actually. It seems their trap didn't work out after all. And now the fortress is in ruins, and in goblin hands. But no matter. The Angry Forest will be a different story. Anywho, let's get down to business. Now, first things first. Well, as you can see, we did not bring any food or drinks with us. Or seeds, for that matter. Nothing at all. <laughs> Off to a great start. But it won't be a big deal because all of our dwarves are herbalists, and so I imagine we could just gather some plants from the surrounding forest, collect seeds from them, and start farming our own food. It won't take that long at all. Look at that, already we have 70 plants. A whole bunch, not bad at all. Now then, we're out here uh, having a look in the trees, and as I was just saying, I was planning on making a fortress up in the trees, but already I'm starting to think that's... <laughs> actually going to be impossible. As far as I know, there's no way to clear away these branches and twigs and stuff. And like, I imagine we could do it if we were just dealing with the trunk of the tree. But with all this extra crap around, um, yeah, I don't know. We'd have to find a proper layout. Might just be a hassle. I think we're just going to focus on making a fortress amongst the trees. And maybe also try to incorporate some trees into our structures in some fashion. I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> One thing I do know for certain is that we're going to need access to stone. We're not going to make our fortress underground, but we still need stone for a whole bunch of other things. Drink containers, that sort of stuff. We have no barrels currently, so we can't even brew drinks. Also, we are going to have to use a little bit of wood. A little bit. Although we're not going to be cutting down trees for it. No, instead we brought a whole bunch with us. Just don't tell the elves, please. Right. Now it's time to figure out what we're going to do in the way of housing. Hmm, <laughs> okay. All right, I have an idea. I'm gonna carve a little house into this knob of dirt right here, through the roots underneath a tree. Gingerly, very gingerly. Don't wanna hurt the tree now, do we? And then as you can see here, we're going to channel around the outside as well. And I wanna try to make a bunch of above ground structures like this, each with a tree coming out of the top. How does that sound? And we'll just continue it over this way. This actually seems to have worked out pretty well. Good to see. Let's get to work, dwarves. Skipping ahead just a little bit, and there we have it. Doesn't that look terrible? <laughs> it looks absolutely terrible. But we're going to get it cleaned up in time, no worries. You can see down this way we have seven houses carved into these four mountains of dirt. And then up to the north we have a meeting hall. Excellent, right? We already do have doors in place. And if I zoom in a bit, you can see over here we have these clumps of roots above which are trees. We're not going to cut any of them down, remember. But we are going to, in fact, preserve them a bit. More on that in just a little. 
Having a look on the map, you can see we have a bunch of badgers running about. Annoying animals. They haven't been too much trouble so far, but I would like to catch some. We'll see how that goes. We do have a bunch of stone now from down in our quarry, so that's not going to be a problem at all. Drink supplies are looking decent. We still have plenty of plants. 800. Yeah, more than enough. Looking good. Not too bad. Just going to continue skipping forward bit by bit, just to make sure we can cram a bunch into this episode. Yeah, things certainly are moving along quickly here. The population has been growing, we've had two migrant waves so far, and we've also somehow been managing to keep up with the bedrooms, even though they've been kind of a pain to carve out. All those roots to deal with. Yeah, it's a hassle. Zooming in a bit to the meeting hall, you can see our ample stockpile of plants and uh, beverages. The traders actually came and went already, and the plants here sell for a considerable amount, and they're very easy to get too, especially when most of your dwarves are gatherers. And so I guess that's our main export for now, just plants. It's surprisingly efficient. And now if we move down here, you can see some more of the houses. We've had to carve out nearly 30 already. They are only sparsely furnished, with dirt floors, wooden beds, and stone doors. Also, you notice these clumps of protected tree roots. Yes, we've surrounded them with stone blocks. And so hopefully that will keep them from harm. I imagine it'll do the trick just fine. Now if we have a look down this way in the forest... Oh, that's exciting. Well, you can see we have some cage traps set up. With cages that we traded the merchants for. Dwarven merchants, by the way. Not elven. Anyways, we do have some metal cages here. And inside one of them we have a red panda boar. Which is pretty exciting. What a cute animal. Its diet consists of only bamboo. Which is a little bit of a problem, but we should be able to manage just fine. Get it to the fortress right now, dwarves. We'll have to see if we can find a mate. And in the meantime, I think we'll set our meeting hall here as a tavern. What better way could there be to show those disgusting elves some proper dwarven hospitality? And going with a randomized name, we have, oh nice, the Climactic Lunch. <laughs> One hell of a lunch. And now we just have to keep our peepers peeled to see if anybody shows up. Still no sign of those elves. Oh, but we just speak of the devils. Here come some merchants. A pair of them and their trade horses. Not much trade here, I guess. But you gotta start somewhere. And you know, I am liking what they have here. You can see they've brought two coyotes, a wild boar, and two adders as well. Nothing too big or dangerous, but this will do just fine, I think. Let's get them. <laughs> oh, and would you look at that? We have a male and female adder and coyote. Just excellent. We'll have to start breeding them right away. And we'll also grab some of this other crap. Thank you, elves. Thank you very much. Now we're just going to come over here and start carving out an animal chamber. We'll need a place to put them. And yeah, we could just keep them outside, but we want to protect them, especially the breeding pairs. I'm still not too sure what dangers lurk out there in this elven forest. We haven't seen anything yet, and honestly, I feel pretty, I'll say, dangerously safe. Our guard is down. And there we go, wonderful. A nice little place for our animals. I will say that it's really quick to make buildings like this. It takes a little bit to plan them out, sure. But actually digging them? Easy. Well, dwarves, get back to work. We have to collect some more plants for next year's trade. We did trade away almost all of our plants just now. But as I said before, it's not a problem to get more. Oh, and uh, here's a surprise. It looks like we have some more migrants here. Not something I was expecting. We've already had two migrant waves, and I thought that was the most you can have while on an island, which we certainly are on. Unless I'm missing something. This is an island, right? And the only holdings on the island belong to the elves. Very strange. Curious how many dwarves we can expect here. Oh well, no matter. Make yourselves at home, dwarves. There's plenty of room for all of us out in the forest. You know, maybe this won't be so bad. This fortress seems to be working out pretty well so far, honestly. Not gonna say the elves are right about all this tree business quite yet, but you know, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Advancing things a bit, you may notice the extreme amount of dwarves here. We had a couple more migrant waves, even after that last one, and are now up to 56 dwarves. Many more than I thought we'd end up having here, but it's fine. We have been keeping up with the bedroom situation and improving things overall as well. You can see here that we've been replacing the dirt walls of some of our structures with clay stone. It's a bit more dwarfy. And if we take a look upwards, you can see all the trees are still intact. No worries at all. An added benefit to having all these trees around is that when it rains, for the most part, it seems to protect our dwarves. It is at least a minor plus. Zooming out a bit so you can see the extent of the fortress. And yeah, it's, uh, it's getting to be a sprawl. And if we look down a Z level, you can see we have continued it down a little bit, just to give us a bit more space to move around. And we are still fully exposed to the surface. And so I still count this as an above ground structure. Very interestingly, up this way in our animal chamber, you can see a few more adders in here. And the nest box is currently full. 
and so we do have to set up a couple more, not a biggie. And at this point, I can safely say our adder production is on the up and up, as well as our coyote production. You can see we have two more pups in here. Very exciting. Before long, we're going to have all sorts of animals. We'll also try to get some more from the elves, too. They should be arriving in just a little bit, actually. And here they come. Just two traders once more. Pretty lame. But once again, better than nothing. And let's see what you got for us. That's it, huh? A badger sow and a green tree frog. <laughs> oh, that sucks. But whatever, gotta make do, I suppose. Just gonna have to really speed things along and try to get to next year quickly. We want some good animals. What the hell's wrong with you elves? I'm talking some, like, some grizzly bears, some sort of a tiger, I don't know. No, you bring a badger and a frog. <laughs> yeah, oh well. Good doing business with you, I suppose. Well, dwarves, keep at it. We're bound to get some useful animals eventually. Might just take a while. But actually, look at that. It looks like we were able to actually catch a red panda sow. A female, that is. And so now we have a chance to start actually breeding them. Not that they're useful creatures, but they might make nice pets. And we also managed to get our hands on some deer as well. Male and female. Very exciting. The good thing about deer is that they have antlers. And if we managed to get enough of them, we could butcher them and use those antlers for crafts. As well as the meat they would provide. Yeah, you know, that's not too bad. I'll take it. Certainly better than a single badger sow. <laughs> Plug it on forward still. And you can see the merchants have arrived. Actually, we have some very nice things prepared for you this time, merchants. How do you guys feel about highly venomous tiny snakes? Because we have a whole slew of them now. And I think it's time we traded some away. Now, I have never traded animals before. But I believe we can do it if we take each of the snakes and bring them here to this cage. And it looks like the merchants are leaving. I don't know why that would be. Well, that's irritating. Well, I guess we'll just take all these snakes and stuff them in this cage. And we'll have to wait till next year, unfortunately. Oh, well. Plug in straight on forward. And we can see the elves have once again arrived. Three of them this time. They must appreciate the extreme amount of plants coming out of our fortress. See, you nasty tree-hugging losers? We got some pretty good stuff here, don't we? Just hoping they brought some useful animals this time. Ah, huh, okay. Still unloading. But they'll be ready soon, I'm sure, right? Just gonna let some time pass here. And while it does, I'll show off our new barracks, where we have a squad of 10 dwarves training, using elven armor and weapons. That's right, all their gear is made of wood. And we have built up a small armory already of this wooden gear. And I wanna clarify something here, just because I always hear the, oh, elves don't let you trade wood, but then they trade wood. But it's actually different because the elves trade grown wood items. It's not cut wood, like typical dwarven crafts. The way the elves get wood, it's more like how we shear a sheep for wool. We shear the sheep and then use the wool and then continue on. I imagine the elves have a similar system for wood, just shearing off tiny portions at a time or perhaps even cultivating bits that will fall off of the tree over time. Maybe they just somehow use a thin layer of bark that they twist into certain forms. Whatever it is is completely different and distinct from wooden items that we're used to. Which is kind of interesting. Although that being said, the armor and weapons made out of it are still pretty much useless. But you know, we're just trying to get a get a feel for the elven equipment. And maybe show our new neighbors that we're willing to try something new. Couldn't hurt, right? Anyways, back to that depot. Ah, and it looks like they're still unloading. But they'll be ready soon, right? Starting to have my doubts, honestly. In fact, I'm noticing one of their horses wandering around over here. Why the hell would that be? I'm noticing they have a grizzly bear and a wolf with them this time. Ugh. Oh, now you bring the grizzly bear. <sighs> well, not much we can do now, I guess. Gonna have to rearrange our trade depot, I think. For some reason, the way we have it set up here is very confusing to the merchants. And that's a bit of a problem. It's okay, though. It is okay. Because we still have our snakes. A whole bunch, as you can see. Actually, these aren't our trading snakes. This is our breeding stock. The snakes for trading are in this cage here. And as you can see, we do have quite a few in here now. I think there are 50 adders in this cage. And I can't wait to send them back to the homeland. I mean, overall, so far, our mission is a great success. Actually, no, I'm thinking I'm pretty curious to see if we trade these to the dwarven civilization, if we can then embark with some adders in the future. Like if we depart from that same civilization. That's an idea I've heard thrown around in the past, but I tend to believe very little that comes out of the Dwarf Fortress community until I see it for myself. So it's an interesting test. A test we can try out in just a couple shakes here, because it looks like the merchants have arrived once more. And assuming they can make it to the depot, we can actually try this thing out. 
And here we go, wonderful. It seems to have worked this time. And in preparation for the trade, I'm gonna have somebody come over here and disassemble this cage, or rather just move it out of this spot, just like that. And so now there's a cage item on the ground here filled with 50 tiny venomous snakes that we will now bring to the depot. Also, the cage is made of lead, and so that's why this dwarf is moving so very slow. Okay, very good. Snakes are in the depot, and wow, would you look at that? It's actually worth almost 3,000. That is not too bad right there, for such a quick breeding creature especially. Well, here you go, and we'll take some garbage from you, and there we go. Wonderful. And actually, now that the traders have those snakes, I'm curious to see if this worked. But before we do, we'll have to wait for them to leave, and I imagine we'll also have to give them some time to get back to the homeland. Shouldn't take too long, though. Cautious optimism, dwarves. Oh, you know what? I just realized we got a bunch of coyotes, too. I'm going to trade a couple of them real quick as well. Couldn't hurt, right? Just got to get them stuffed in this cage here. And there we go. A male and female coyote. I'm very excited to see if this worked. But again, we'll have to give them just a moment. And they're off. Goodbye, merchants. Please enjoy your coyotes and snakes, courtesy of the angry forest. Okay, they're gone, and we'll give them a bit, maybe a month or so. And in the meantime, we can get some things done around the fortress. You can see right here a bunch of dwarves grabbing stone blocks, a great many of them. They're heading up to the surface to get them in place in the bedrooms, down here in the lower level. Looking pretty good, right? Heh, <laughs> kinda. Admittedly, it still looks a tad messy down here. But up above, you can see all the dwellings are now made out of stone blocks. It's really starting to feel like a proper dwarven fortress, too. Finally. At this point, our population is up to 99 dwarves, which is quite a few. And we do have enough bedrooms for everyone, surprisingly. And also, I should mention that most of the dwarves are in pretty high spirits. There are a couple of miserable ones out there, but they're few and far between at the moment. We'll see if we can maintain that. Before we retire this fortress briefly, I do want to note these trees over here. Um, <laughs> we have a bunch of sheep here in the fortress, ones I've never mentioned and sometimes they get spooked by wild animals, and they will run straight up into the branches of the surrounding trees, where they starve. Currently, there's five sheep corpses up here, just kind of hanging in the branches, I guess. <laughs> the Angry Forest Bone Tree, we'll call it. It's a proper dwarven landmark if ever I've seen one. Alrighty, I think that's been enough time right there, so now we're going to back away from the Angry Forest for just a little bit and allow it to retire, just briefly. And now we're going to create a new fortress, pretty much right next door, just to see if we can embark with some adders or coyotes. And here we are zooming into the small dwarven outpost known as Ustos Kovath, the Angry Bushels, having been founded by a small dwarven group known as the Angry Bushel, and whose symbol is a blackberry bush. The blackberry bush is screaming, of course, and they are just setting out here and unfortunately we have some bad news. Yes, unfortunately, we were unable to take any adders or coyotes with us. A damn shame. But it's kind of what I expected, honestly. I don't even know if that's possible, to be frank. If we have a look at the animal tab here, you can see the Cave of Lashing's familiarity with taming certain creatures. And you can also see which ones are domesticated and which ones we have general familiarity with. And all the domesticated ones are the ones that we can take with us. And I've found that as you tame creatures over time, your civilization seems to gain knowledge with taming these creatures. Like down here you can see red pandas, a few of which we tamed at that previous fortress. We know a few facts about domesticating them, but that's about it. I'm curious if we were able to keep taming them for long enough if we would eventually be able to domesticate them. That might be what has to happen first, but I've never accomplished that in a fortress ever. It's pretty difficult, mostly because after we train animals a few times, we have a chance at getting tame creatures, which we can then breed. And so from a fortress's perspective, there's no reason to keep training them, thereby increasing our civilization's knowledge of domesticating the animal. But I wonder if you had enough of a certain type of creature around and just kept training them over and over and over again, I guess over the course of many, many, many years, maybe then you'd stand a chance at actually fully domesticating the animal? Could be. Could be. Oh, and you may notice here, uh, the cats. We decided to bring 136 of them with us. For companionship, mostly. I don't think the angry bushels know what the hell they're doing. Anyway, it's going to zoom back out here. I wish you the best of luck, Angry Bushels. But we're headed back now to the Angry Forest. Actually, you know what? I think before we head back to the fortress, I want to take an adventurer out over to the capital of the Cave of Lashing. Just to see if we can figure out what happened with those snakes. 
They must have went somewhere, right? All right, well, we're in, and I'm not seeing much anything yet. I'm at this tavern here, and I do see a bunch of plump helmet men. An odd sight indeed, but as of yet, no coyotes or snakes. Gonna head down into the fortress now. I just really want to see if we can figure out what these dwarves did with these animals. Yeah, I don't know, I'm taking a look around the place and I'm not seeing much of anything. Just a whole lot of mushroom men. And elves, actually. All members of the Cave of Lashing. Hell, even the mayor is an elf. A bit surprising. But it does give a pretty good explanation as to why these dwarves want to increase their relationship with the surrounding elven civilizations. You know, it is actually pretty crazy how many elves and mushroom people there are in this fortress. I don't think I've ever seen a dwarven fortress with this many plump helmet men in it. It's crazy, there must be dozens, if not hundreds? Honestly, I wouldn't doubt it. And yet not a single snake or coyote to be seen. That's a damn shame. Oh well. Back to the angry forest, I suppose. And here we are. How you doing, dwarves? I trust everything's going well still. Seems to be. Except for the terrible stink in the meeting hall. Now then, looking down here, I had forgotten that we had a bunch of badgers in the fortress. And unfortunately, I had already butchered quite a few because we were able to get a couple of fully tamed ones, which means we won't have to train them anymore. But luckily, we do still have a couple of fairly wild ones. And we should be able to catch some more as well. We had previously done a ton of training with badgers that I forgot about. And actually, if you take a look at the animal tab once more, you can see that our civilization has a general familiarity with taming badgers, thanks to our efforts here, I would assume. So I don't know, maybe it goes quicker than I thought? It just would help a ton if we had a whole bunch of individuals to train. We'll have to keep our eyes open for more. Also, it appears that our civilization has no knowledge about coyote or adder taming at all. And that's probably because we bought fully tamed ones from the elves, which doesn't help us out at all, seemingly. Maybe it's not getting a bunch of animals to our civilization that matters. Maybe we have to have that knowledge under our belt first. That's what I'm hoping. We still do have a little bit of time here to mess around with. All right, we already have gotten our hands on a couple more badgers up here. We were actually able to get our warriors to chase them into these traps. We'll start training them immediately. Oh, neat. We actually caught a lot more than I thought we did. Look at that. We currently have at least 10 trainable badgers, and maybe a few more than that even. Just letting a little bit of time pass, and we just got this notification. The dwarves of the Angry Tree are now quite knowledgeable badger trainers. That's pretty exciting. And if we have a look at the animal tab, you can see that we are in fact knowledgeable about training badgers. It's increasing. I don't know how far up it'll go, but let's keep plowing forward, see what happens. This really is taking a long, long time to do. And I haven't been paying the best attention to the fortress, honestly. But it looks like everyone's still doing pretty well. There are a couple of corpses over here. So something happened at some point. I don't know what. One of these corpses is of a cavefish woman who showed up here as a were lizard and was quickly put down by our military. Not a problem at all. And I suppose I'll also update you on the angry forest bone tree. Yeah, there's an ever increasing number of skeletons up there. I think there are five sheep and at least a pair of deer. And currently we have a bunny and a second deer stuck up there, both about to be immortalized in our legendary landmark. A sacrifice we give to you, dearest trees. And while we're here, you know, I've found another use for the trees, an obvious use, but it's not one I've utilized in the past. And that is the fallen fruit, which covers the ground around these trees. Peaches, limes, plums. That's what most of these colored patches are on the ground. It's super easy just to assign a zone as a fruit gathering area, and your dwarfs will come right up and pick all those fruit up off the ground. I don't know, I guess I always thought it was more involved. But no, nope, super simple. I thank you once again, mighty trees. Yes, thanks to your protection, we now have a bountiful home out here in the forest. A safe place where we can exist for generations, happily raising our badgers. The future is bright, dwarves. Right, well, several years have passed and the Angry Forest has become an absolute hellscape. Things are advancing forward and backwards in many ways. You'll notice right off the bat that many of the dwarves are unhappy, very, very unhappy, or just outright insane. We've kind of totally been focusing on badger rearing, and as you can see, we do have quite a few now, all in various states of training. Most of them are pretty poorly trained and will revert to a wild state at any time and will attack the other badgers or possibly our dwarves. There are, <laughs> just notice there are several of them dead outside the badger pit. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gotten wild out there. I like to think we're running kind of a cult of the badger at this point, with the dwarves kind of reverting to a strange animalistic society. 
tribe, if you will. There's, I mean, they're constantly fighting. Most of this is blood in here. Ghosts. There are several. Um, our leader died at some point, killed by some other dwarf. The population is down to about 67 dwarves. Down from 99, remember. And things are definitely spiraling out of control. But it's not all bad news around here. Certainly not. No, of course not. The bone tree is becoming ever more impressive. We even have a dwarf corpse up there now. The elves were completely wiped from the island. And as far as our badger training goes, we are now expert trainers, which is pretty cool. And you know, I've had an awful lot of time to look around, gather information from outside the actual game. And it does seem to be entirely impossible to actually domesticate animals. Meaning that this episode ended up being a total waste of time, but... I don't know. I guess I just like to figure out things by myself. I hope you at least had fun. I certainly did. All oh, right, and back to that whole elves being wiped off the island thing. Yeah, we most certainly ruined them. And now their entire civilization has crumbled to dust. I don't even think they're a thing anymore. Like all these forest retreats here, they're just there's no population, not controlled by anyone. Yeah, I think they're uh, I think they're gone. We didn't need them anymore. It had to be done for the good of the burrow and our badger overlords. All hail the mighty badger. Ew, just kind of look at our corpse pile over here. That's a mess. Hmm. Anyways, yeah, this fortress is pretty great. And although it ultimately ended up being a failure, and our entire population has devolved into a cult of badger-worshipping psychopaths, I think some good did come out of this fortress. We may have started out just kind of pretending to appreciate these trees, but I think the dwarves of the Angry Forest have actually learned to appreciate the trees here. Dwarves respecting trees. I never thought I'd see the day. Which actually brings me to another point. One that some of you may have seen coming. But if I could just bend your ear for a second. Well, I'd like to tell you about Team Trees. Which is an amazing collaborative fundraising challenge aimed at raising 20 million US dollars by 2020 to plant 20 million trees. Which I think is just a fantastic idea and I figured I'd try to get the word out there a little bit. Admittedly, I'm fairly late to the game, and the goal is almost reached. And so maybe if you could just head on over there and, you know, put forward a dollar, perhaps, your one dollar could be a tree. And that's all it takes, too. You just gotta head over to the website, fill out a couple forms, and you're doing some good. And it's something that really resonates with me, and I can get behind it, because I'm kind of like a formless blob that just sits behind his computer all day playing Dwarf Fortress, but I still want to do good, so this really, it just works for me. And if you're a formless blob like me, then... Maybe it'll work for you, too. Let's do some good, you bearded bastards. I've seen some folks around criticizing this whole Team Trees thing, saying that 20 million trees is just a drop in the bucket. And you know what? To hell with them. Can a group of people just get together and do some good? It's certainly not hurting anything, right? I mean, come on, you want to be stuck out in the rain? Isn't it nice to have that canopy above you, protecting you from the rain? Giving you those bad thoughts? Ruining your life till the end of days? Don't you like peaches, limes, plums? Of course you do, who doesn't? And I know you enjoy seeing the desiccated corpses of sheep and deer hanging in those branches. Who doesn't? You gotta, right? The bone tree. The angry forest bone tree. It's a landmark. We love it. Joking aside, this is our world. And we should do a little bit to preserve it, right? I think so. Anyways, thank you for hearing me out, you bearded bastards. It means a lot. Truly. <sighs> Right, now then, it's really kind of a shame about the whole murderous badger cult thing, but, you know, it happens. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I certainly hope to see you again, my bearded bastards. And, until next time.